So people want to feel like it's being used to get the correct decisions so that matches the outcome of games aren't affected by something that could obviously have been quickly rectified. And the second thing is, from a television point of view, it helps create controversy, which helps create viewing figures um, and follow-up through, like, you know, social well, media do you remember, interaction do you remember nowadays. remember the, the famous Gan- the Ganson magic? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, just remember that, that sort of incident. That's what they want, isn't it, from a Sky perspective? Def- well, definitely, definitely, um, and that's why they have Cummins there doing the role is in the way he's doing it, and not in a, a different way as well. But the so the clear and obvious error that's going to affect a game with a challenge with a limited challenge system. The one thing that removes from your control is the possibility of having these challenges left at the most result defining part of a game and yeah. the time where the players and the match officials are most at their fatigued and most under the most pressure to get the decisions correct and i could just see a captain running out of challenges and then a clear and obvious mistake being made in the last five minutes of a you know a big game and and that then us all complaining about the system being broken because how can that be allowed to happen and and this sort of stuff so unless you brought in a rule like the nfl has Sorry to keep going back to it, but like the NFL has, where the last two minutes of each half, the on the match officials get to decide if there's a, a review or not. Um, but then, where do we brought, bring that drawing the dividing line in? I, I think the system isn't broke, isn't broken so much. I'd go away from the live call now, yeah. like Phil's suggesting. I think it's we've tried it; it had good intentions, but it's not worked out how we would have hoped. The I would possibly consider putting a time limit on the video ref. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something I've said for a while. If you can't make a decision in a minute, then if they've still got the live call, it goes with the live call. It just defaults back to that. Or they just have to make the best guess. Okay, I've looked at it all. I think it's probably a try on the balance of probabilities and how they used to have with the benefit of the doubt. And then that's when that kicks in. Yeah, I, I, I think... You know, yeah, that that's the way to go. I think. I mean, it seemed to work best the video refereeing system because we're never going to get rid of it. It's never going to go away. No. So let's be realistic. So the way it worked best was the way it worked for the first fifteen or so years. I thought, with benefit of doubt, to to the try. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm sure everyone has loads of opinions on that sort of stuff, though. And thanks, Phil, for raising that conversation early in the season so we can get it polished off with by uh, next week. So get your views in on that, everyone, on what Phil said there. And then we'll certainly cover all of those off next week. And that'll be a wrap on the video referee discussion, um, hopefully. Until at, least, until at least round 10 where a howler gets made and then we have to bring it all up again. Well, yeah, let's say we're not going to discuss it again after next week until magic depth until after, magic yeah after magic weekends a fair because that's halfway through the regular season then isn't it that's a yeah. fair shout yeah <laughs> right okay brilliant some great talking points there people so thanks for all of those and um, we're going to move on now to news from around the world of rugby league <laughs> Right, so moving on to the news, and the news section is sponsored by littlewarden.com. If you have a website, then visit littlewarden.com and see what they can do to help you. They can help you with domain expiration checks, redirects, and all that sort of important background web stuff that they'll make simple for you. Little Warden, monitoring the tedious. Uh, And we've got some news, really, that is definitely not tedious. Um, And it's been a... The first story has been a fun one to monitor as the week's gone on, really. Um, Do you want to take us through the first big news story from the last week in Rugby League, Tim? Yes, indeed. Castleford Tigers have signed Hull FC prop Liam Watts for a significant fee, read into that what you will, on a three-year deal. Watts, 27. How is he only 27? Helped Hull win back-to-back Challenge Cups in 2016 and 2017. He is currently serving a free match ban for a headbutt in the victory over Warrington on the 2nd of March, which we may or may not have discussed. Hull coach <laughs> Lee Radford told the club website, I would like to wish Liam all the best and hope he can find some consistency off the field to benefit his career. Watt said, it's a move that has come around quickly, but one that I couldn't let me 
pass me by. If there's been one team in the league that I was going to suit my style of play, then it's definitely Castleford. And we've got some of your views on that, starting with Neil McEwen at Neil McEwen 4600. Crazy transfer, surprised Hull let him go as he's probably been their best prop. Unless Radford is fucking Fredders with the crazy <laughs> bastard. Brilliant signing for Cass. <laughs> Neil is responsible for most of the swearing that, that Sarah had to do last week as well. <laughs> but yeah, that, I kind of think that sums it up though. There seems to be a discord, doesn't there, between the uh, uh, the Hull head coach and the player. Which if you look is, at that statement, if yeah. you look at that statement and it just says absolutely the consistency off the field is clearly... I reckon it's after the headbutt, he's had enough. And he said, right, I've had had enough of you now. And and it's what I alluded to at the time as well, that it wouldn't surprise me if this was going to happen at some point. Yeah. I thought it was probably another, there was probably another instant, another red card left on his. But it's kept going all week, hasn't it? That like, you know, with lots coming out saying they've got no off the field issues and rather coming out and saying, you know, I'm not going to say anything more. It's all in the club statement and then saying more. <laughs> that, <laughs> that it's nothing to do with the way he was playing, that they had an issue with. It was other aspects. And um, you kind of think if there was going to be someone that was going to take him under his wing and kind of make him into a better, it would be Lee Radford. So if Lee Radford can't work his magic on a slightly off the wall prop who prone to bouts of craziness, then you'd think that not many people are going to try that, which is why he's probably end up at Castleford where they've got a history of getting something, that last little bit of juice out of a rough diamond. Well, that's kind of a good segue to the next um, listener view. Lee Whitnell says, this is a great signing for Cass. Tough lad with good hands. Daryl Powell could make him into a superstar. He just needs to learn to control his inner lunatic. Well, that's kind of, you know, from from the, the coach that we thought maybe was a disciplinarian who could control him to a coach who doesn't seem to be that disciplinarian, but as definitely got the best out of his players but not necessarily kept them capable of delivering their best through <laughs> other aspects of their lives you know you go through rangy chase um i think justin carney was a uh, uh, cast under powell certainly wasn't he yeah he was yeah times. um and zach hardacre as well so you know there's a there's a string of people there that daryl powell hasn't been able to um help control necessarily their inner demons, but has made them into short-term superstars. And, I mean, they were, as well, a prop light probably in their rotation once they'd lost Andy Lynch and probably did need somebody coming in. So it is a good sign. I mean, it's a fantastic signing on the pitch. It's whether they, how long they can keep him going for I don't and know keep if everything saw, under control. I don't know if you saw the... Um now redundant Wigan Fan TV episode from last week in which friend of our show, Fatboy Rob, was uh, one of the guests uh, this week from giving a Castleford... I didn't catch up on this one. He was talking about how Castleford's forwards haven't been giving him the edge this year. So that's one good thing for um, signing a, a prop forward. But Mark at Wilco2205 kind of disagrees with what Cass's needs were. He says, Cass needed a fullback and ideally someone who's less of a liability than their previous star players. Watts is the perfect <laughs> choice. <laughs> and then Brian Davies, a Wakefield fan, says, and it's great to hear from Brian, uh, I think the first yeah. time this season, he says, Liam Watts kicked out by Hull and picked up by Cass. They have a, oh, he's, he's covered this point for us that we, we got to already. He says, they have a history of Chase, Carney and Hardacre. You'd have thought Cass would have learnt their lesson, expecting to be binned again within the year. I think I think he'll do well this season, and he'll do he'll get they'll get a good season out of him next year, and then he'll go off the boil. Yeah, that'll be my that'll be my prediction. When he doesn't get picked for Great Britain in 2019, there'll be some yeah. shenanigans at the end of season party or something that'll uh, that'll then stir up anything else that's been rumbling along that's kind of been excused and what, by his performances, which is yeah. possibly what's been happening at Hull FC. Exactly what I was going to come to. It, it does seem that they've kind of forgiven him because of his on. He's been okay on the fields and he's been fantastic for them. So he's carried it. They've kind of let that go, but then it's got to this point where they've gone. Actually, he's not delivering on the field because he's become a liability. He's a walking red card effectively, and he's pissing us off off the field with whatever he's up to. Yeah. Why? Why are we still? And then. Because there was talk at one point of a, um, sparking up a bidding war between Cass and Toronto, wasn't there? Well, yeah, but I think possibly Watts might have said, I don't want to go Toronto. So 
yeah. that, that's speculation, but I would think if if his real ambition is to get in the England side, which is one of the things he said about he thinks this move can help him do, um, then going to Toronto wouldn't have helped him fulfil that ambition in any way, shape or form. The one the one thing that does sort of concern me if, if I'm looking at it from a cast point of view is the way they defend, they defend with all 13 men. Now, if they've got someone who is going to potentially cost them in a big game, is that going to hamper them because they're they've so built on having everybody that can come behind the ball and really work for each other. And they do work tremendously hard in defence. Yeah. It's just, if he could control the stupid stuff like the headbutt against Warrington, then the other stuff is incidental and can happen in games, but sometimes doesn't happen in games. And if he can just keep the right side of that line, I think he's an absolutely fantastic player. So a good signing from that point of view. Um, I think now with the way the suspension is going to work out, you know, I think his first game back is going to be against Hull. So that's going to be a spicy encounter. <laughs> now, if that's, that comes down to a coaching point, do you throw him back in? Or do you say, oh, you've got a bit of an injury, Liam. Work work it off for a week. Wait, it must be, a, they've played Hull, have Cass played Hull already? Yeah, they have, so it must be Yeah, OKR. they did on that on that Saturday afternoon. Must be OKR okay, then. Is that, over, is that the second one over Easton? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that's that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, yeah. No, because Hull KR against Wigan's the second one over Easter. Right, I don't know mm. then. I must have mis- uh, misread that somewhere. But there you go. Um, anything more on that one? No. Right, next big story then that broke last uh, Wednesday, I think. Warrington Wolves standoff Kevin Brown has retired from International Rugby League with England at the age of 33. God, he's the same age as me. He looks way older. Brown was a member... Well, that's me saying that. I feel way younger he does, probably he, is what it is. <laughs> I would have had him down as 35. Just yeah. There we go. Brown was a member of the England squad that lost 6-0 to England to Australia in the 2017 World Cup final and finishes his representative career with 10 caps. It feels like now is the right time, said Brown. Obviously, I'm disappointed I can't play on forever, but I think I've been really lucky with that I've played so many games. Um, loads of people got in touch on this, and I think we'll whiz through all of these, uh, and yeah. then we'll we'll get our says. So, Because um, I think a lot of them touch on the, the, the same themes. So Lee Whitnell, a Warrington fan, says, I've criticised his performance for Wire since he joined us, and I wasn't a fan of his inclusion in the England squad, but when called upon, he didn't let anyone down and had a really good World Cup. Deserves credit for withdrawing himself from selection now. Dirt, Dirt wrote... Dirt through. Road Cowboy says uh, he sucks good riddance. <laughs> yeah, that's a slightly different take. Um, Paul O'Brien says, I think it's the right move for him. Not playing well at club level. Needs to concentrate on his club rugby. After all, they pay his wages. Neil McEwen says, not even an England fan, but chuffed that Judas has retired. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Davies says met him in Oz ahead of the Samoa game last May and he was well pleased with the confidence Wayne Bennett showed in him he played well for England he played in a World Cup final and was selected for this year's EPS by Supercoach Wayne so he can be proud that he quit whilst he was at the top hashtag top bloke Mark at Wilco2205 people are far too quick to forget he had a decent World Cup for a spell it was unfair he got the bulk of the stick when the EPS was announced uh, Mark Butler said it's up to him but it's fuel to the fire that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing in the rugby league that snakey McSnakes named in the squad he didn't even want to be in <laughs> and finally trying to have the last word Sarah McKenzie at Scoots 28 Mac why wait until you're named before announcing you're retiring was he not told he was going to be in the squad <laughs> well those last two kind of cover the same sort of point which is a bit strange but maybe if we took it more on the angle that Brian approached it with that it gave him a chance to sort of retire from a positive uh, Yeah position. and I think I mean I'm not his biggest fan by any means I thoroughly dislike him at points and I've often thought he's someone who the media have talked up far above his actual playing ability however he did have a very good World Cup. He did. You can't argue with his on-field performance. He did put shift in, and actually having him in there and having Widder put fullback did give us the balance that we weren't going to have. So that was good. And I actually I don't disagree with him retiring at this point. I think he's probably, you know, he's he said yeah yeah I'm in the squad. That's good when he's asked, and then he's gone away and had a think about it and thought about the implications of okay how old am I going to be at the next World Cup. I'm not going to get there. 
do I want to extend my season? 